Hello, it's hashtag Ask Lauren. I am shooting this on the day and then I'll quickly edit it for you, what you're watching now. And I didn't know what to do for hashtag Ask Lauren because we just did a bunch of vegan questions. We just did a whole relationship topic. We did a really specific vegan thing and I just sort of wanted to find something new to talk to you about. And I found some cool questions that are a little bit conspiracy-esque slash weird new agey things. So one question from Samantha Watkins says, what do you think about the Mandela effect? And also, what are your thoughts on time travelers? I came across a bunch of videos here on YouTube and I think some of the claims and proofs are real, like the VW logo or the Fruit Loops dilemma. And some don't seem real. I don't know, I'm interested in this and since you are a spiritual person, I'm curious to see what you think. Love from Mexico. So I didn't know what the Mandela effect was and I was just reading about it. I don't know everything about it. I'm gonna pull it up and read you a couple things because maybe you don't know either. The Mandela effect is a theory of parallel universes based in the idea that because large groups of people have similar alternative memories about past events. Advocates of the theory claim that for these collective experiences to be true, the fabric of reality must have shifted at some point in the past and that therefore not only do parallel and inhabitable universes exist, but that we are constantly switching between them. The term Mandela effect was coined by self-described paranormal consultant Fiona Broom, who has written on her website that she first became aware of the phenomenon after discovering that she had shared a particular false memory that South African human rights activist and President Nelson Mandela died in prison during the 1980s. He actually died in 2013. Then she began noticing other examples. In this one, I was reading about the Berenstein Bears. I would have also said that I thought the books were called the Berenstein Bears, um, B-E-R, E-N-S-T-E-I-N, -E and I had all the books, and apparently it's Berenstain, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N. I, I mean, I do believe in parallel universes. I think that anytime you've basically thought of, like you're making a decision and you're like, am I gonna do this or this? And you've imagined all those scenarios. I feel like somewhere in a parallel universe, those scenarios exist and are happening and you have the option to choose whichever one you want and manifest it. This whole like misremembering information to me isn't really the proof of that. I just feel like it's like if you've imagined something and you've drummed up some sort of fantasy or dream or desire in your head, then it's possible in a parallel universe, but you can bring it into this path by thinking about it and then moving forward on those thoughts but you've thought of multiple scenarios of the same thing and so all of those are possible and happening. So that's kind of my parallel universe theory. This Mandela effect and this misremembering of things, I feel like there's such minor mistakes that like it's how like some people hear different words in songs than other people and you insist that like this is the word or like really cliche phrases like nip it in the bud, which everyone thinks is nip it in the butt and I thought it was <laughs> until like a few years ago. I think that's the same as remembering Berenstein Bears or McDonald's spelled a different way. To me, those aren't really significant. Even Nelson Mandela, I'm one of those people that thought Nelson Mandela was dead before 2013 um, until recently I realized that he died in 2013 as well. So I feel like these are just really common mistakes that of course people are bound to get wrong because of how much information we're receiving at any given time. And also, especially with like international affairs and politics, I feel like we are very misinformed and we have different versions and perspectives of what things really are. And we really have no idea because we don't live in those countries or whatever, and we're just listening to the news and reading Twitter. So to me, that's not proof that there's parallel universes. But again, like I said, my proof and theory of parallel universe is that I've thought of every parallel scenario when, I, when I'm thinking of something. And so that must be in existence somewhere in a parallel that's like literally right here. And sometimes, and I told you my friggin' trip out problem when I got high in Portland when I did my live stream, I told everybody this story, that I actually was shifting in and out of parallel universes, parallels of the exact situation I was in with John. And so I actually, for like 100% believe that I experienced that in and out shifting. Yes, I was high, but I think that being high allowed me to actually physically see and feel and understand that that's something that probably happens quite often. So anyways, maybe you think I sound like a Looney Tunes, but that's what I think. And then time traveling, I mean, I don't know. Time traveling, like, you know, watching Donnie Darko and other movies that are really like good at portraying time travel, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. But <clears throat> it gets so complicated. Um, Interstellar is a really good movie that I really liked and really felt um, connected to. 
I don't know. I mean, can you actually time travel? I have no idea. Can you time travel in your dreams? Probably. Have you time traveled because you've come from other lives and you're reincarnated? I think so. So in terms of like the technical science behind time travel, I have absolutely no idea and it confuses me and I can't have a conversation about it because I don't understand time, space. I don't get that shit. I just assume if everyone's talking about it and it sounds legitimate and people are smart and they study it, then it must be real. <laughs> I'm pretty open-minded. The other question I was gonna fit in here, um, Tasha Jansen asked my, what are my thoughts on the Illuminati? After meeting all those celebs that you have, I would think you have some type of insight about the strange things that go down in celebrity life or at least notice something wasn't quite right at times. First of all, I love talking about the Illuminati because it's so fascinating. Watch, uh, Ryan Higa, is that his name? Niga Higa, that guy's channel. He has a video called Proving the Illuminati is Real and it's amazing and it's so entertaining and funny. So just watch that, pause mine, go watch that, now come back. And my, yeah, I interviewed celebrities for many, many years, all the ones that they say are part of the Illuminati, like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, and Justin Bieber, Kanye West. I don't really get what decipher someone who's part of the Illuminati and somebody who's not, but a lot of people say just like, all major celebrities in general are part of the Illuminati and it's a big conspiracy to like brainwash us and manipulate us to become servants and slaves to like the people who control the world. And then there, you know, there's all this information about Freemasonry and how it's such a hidden secret society and like I find all that so fascinating. What's that one YouTube documentary called? that talks about it with all the symbolism on the American dollar bill and the eye and the triangle. Anyway, I love that YouTube documentary. It got me all amped up about conspiracy theories. Part of me is just like, it's kind of like the same as like my alien theory. It's like so many people talk about this stuff and the information is out there that I don't just think it's made up and come out of thin air for no reason. Like there must be some substantiated information that's trickled down through the ages to make people believe that this is something that's actually happening. As much as I'm like, someone who believes in like trusting the universe and like trusting God or life and like what's thrown at you and everything happens for a reason. On the other hand, I have this theory that I don't, or I mean, I have this belief too that I can't really trust. You can't really trust big establishments because so many things are bullshit and you know, trusting the music industry or trusting big business or trusting the government. Like it's hard to trust that for me. I feel like it's something I just, feel inherently like there must be so many lies on top of lies on top of lies. I mean, just look at the crap in the news, like everyone's lying all the time. It's crazy. So like, how could we trust the government and believe that they're not hiding a whole bunch of shit, including like, I do think there are like the people at the top who are like the puppet masters, because if even if you just think about like the food system and how influenced the food system is by government and big corporation and oil and all of these things, it's like, of course there's bullshit and strings being pulled by the rich people at the top. So I believe in that kind of stuff. And whether you want to call that Illuminati or not, I don't know. As soon as you start talking about the Illuminati, most people are like, oh, you're insane. And I love watching all those videos that are like, Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus and Britney Spears and like every pop star is like, signed a deal with the devil and like, look at all the symbolism in the videos. The fact that there's all that symbolism to me is kind of crazy. And I don't necessarily think that's the influence of the devil, but also you've got a very small portion of people running the music industry. And I'm sure all of these themes are just sort of like transmuted into people's brains, music video directors, art designers, da da da. And I think in an almost automatic subconscious way, they are relaying the same imagery over and over again, which is why we get the triangles and the, thing but you know what else other videos so crazy that justin bieber um skrillex uh diplo song with all the drawings that are supposedly fan drawings like all animated behind him there's one that shows like it in slow motion where there's like crazy like weird aliens coming to abduct him and like pentacles and like triangles and like devil and like fire around him so he looks like satan and like it's a really crazy video if you actually watch that video it, it's kind of mind blowing like the symbolism and like the imagery in that and like you're like why is that even in the video? Um, celebrities are weird and I've talked to a lot of them and I'm pretty relatable and like I really felt like for a long time once I got really comfortable doing interviews like I can really put people at ease and like get them to open up a little more than like just the regular old like you know cookie cutter TV personality. I feel like I tried to get personal and like made them feel comfortable enough to kind of open up about certain things. And like, you can see that if you watch my interviews, but um, you know, somebody like Taylor Swift. Now I love Taylor Swift, so don't hate on me. I think Taylor Swift's music is amazing. She's very fascinating. But when I met her in person, 
quite honestly, there is something strange about her. There is something so um, possessed about her where she seems like a vessel that's kind of possessed and in like autopilot robot mode. And she's so good at coming off authentic and real and she just has it down to what I feel like is almost a calculated act or science and this is not meant to sound mean but I'm just trying to talk in relation to like what you're asking me which is what I've noticed in interviewing celebrities some of them just seem empty when you look into their eyes and Katy Perry is another one I did an interview with Katy Perry it made me feel weird and I'm a vibe person okay so I'm not judging I love I think these women are gorgeous I think they are very talented I think it's amazing how much they influence young people to feel good about themselves and all that stuff I don't I'm not throwing all that out the window I think that's very important and I think they serve a purpose and whether you want to say people are controlling them or whatever I'm sure people are controlling the message and everything but at least the message is mostly positive I think and you're, you've seen that more and more in the last decade is that things have gone from like an angsty negative place to a really positive you know body positivity confidence like love yourself first like you know girl squad that kind of messaging I think overall that's like pretty positive stuff but I felt really uncomfortable sitting with Katy Perry and I really found her to be like I don't know just like not like quite inhabiting her own body like it's weird it's kind of weird and whether that's something that a big I sometimes think that's something a big celebrity who always has things coming at them I can't imagine it's so stressful you've got the public the paparazzi the media your business people there's a lot of pressure on you I feel like it is quite common for them to especially you're coming in and someone from the media is interviewing you so I don't expect them to be like their true selves with me because they obviously have their guard up around the media but some people don't, aren't aren't like this. Some people are super down to earth and you're just like, yeah, you're cool, you're here, you're present, you're there. But I think when it comes to these big celebrities, they are trained to sort of like leave their body. They do their job, they do it well. I'm not saying they're being fake. They're still being like somewhat authentic, but when you're face to face with them and talking to them, it's like they've just decided to leave their body so that they don't, they're not attached nothing can attack, they don't feel attacked. It's like, it's like a defense mechanism so they can handle the situation of like lights, cameras, whatever. And I think for a lot of them, they feel like creative and songwriting is like their calling. But I think some of the other aspects like the media and the press and the celebrity them isn't even something they signed up for. It just sort of goes along with the territory once you hit that level. And I think, you know, even someone like Justin Bieber, like they don't, these people don't look at you. They're not looking at you and they're not there because they're used to putting up their blinders because they have to block out crowds and fans and people screaming at them. And they kind of just have to like, it's like, I just call it like they have shutters or blinders kind of up to block out the noise. And you're even seeing that with Justin Bieber, like canceling his meet and greets and like kind of retreating and trying to go within and trying to be quiet and serene because he can't handle all of that noise from people and things and business and music and entertainment and BS. And so I think that I'm saying they seem possessed and I don't mean that like they seem possessed by the devil, but I do think that the way they act has to be somewhat disconnected in order for them to survive and continue to succeed with what they're doing because I think if you were to really talk to a lot of them in a really honest way, which you'll never hear in the media because the messaging in the media is so precise and, and, and played, is of course they'd rather just be at home with their family and the people that they can trust who love them and like cook and watch TV and like, you know, that's where they're going to be their realist. And I don't really think we're getting their full, we're getting an aspect of them, but we're not seeing their, their real sort of trueness come out but i but i think both serve a purpose i mean they obviously have this light and this message they need to share via their music and their art so it's like it's just a weird thing i always analyze it i find it so fascinating that's what i loved the most about my job was getting to be part of that world and really see kind of like what's under the veil you know i was always a fan and i got to like be the fan and get excited and believe the message and believe the persona and then when you really get in there and you see what's really happening of course there's strings being pulled and people you know managing the puppets like that's just how it is and not to like ruin your thoughts about any of this but you know at least if you're old enough that you understand that's what's going on so i don't mean to crush your dreams if you're younger and you still love bieber or katie perry or taylor swift I'm not, i think they're still great people i think they're still doing really good work and they're serving their purpose i don't know if i quite answered whether i believe in the illuminati or not but i do like talking about it i find it really interesting so thanks for those questions and I'm going to leave you now and come back on Monday because I got what I ate in a day on Monday. And uh, 
that's it. All right, peace out, guys. Have a good weekend. Love you.